Well, TPIT, the acronym, uh, is spelled two different ways. The first part, TP, refers to total pancreatectomy. So, of course, the pancreas gland is a gland that's situated behind the stomach, and it has two main functions. One is to produce enzymes that digest food, and the other, on the surface of the, are, uh, on the, surface of the pancreas, are little eyelets. We we'll call them eyelets of Langerhans after the person who described them. And the second part of the, this surgery is to take those little eyelets from the pancreas once the pancreas is outside the body and put them back in the body. Uh, now, usually when, when they're put back in, they go back into the liver. This seems to be the best place for eyelets once they come away from the pancreas. So, in terms of the, uh, uh, the acronym, it's either TPAIT, i.e. Uh, total pancreatectomy and auto eyelet transplant, or TPIAT, total pancreatectomy and eyelet auto transplant. And the auto refers to the fact that they are your own eyelets that go back into your body, as opposed to allo transplant, where somebody else's organ goes into you. So this, this is why it's a little bit convoluted, but the 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 uh, but the uh, but the um, uh, surgery is very specific in that regard. So, what's the importance of the eyelids? Why do we need to do this? Why not just take out the pancreas uh, if that's really the problem? Well, the eyelids are unique in that they produce the insulin, and of course, we all know the significance of insulin and diabetes is a huge problem both in children and adults throughout the world. The eyelids are actually fun, uh, are, uh, they produce the insulin that controls the glucose. So if you lose the eyelids by, say, not reimplanting them or not putting them back in the body, then you automatically become a severe diabetic. And that's in part because the eyelids contain two types of cells, beta cells, which produce insulin, and alpha cells, which produce the hormones that balance the insulin out. So it's not just that you bring you control the glucose one way by by allowing by the insulin allowing it to go into organs and get utilized, but the other way too that the insulin doesn't overwork, so that you know your blood sugar doesn't go too low. So this, is, as usual in the body, is a dynamic situation where both sides are actually controlled. Now, without the islets, you become what we call a brittle diabetic. With the shifts in glucose that you get, you can of course die from severe hypoglycemia, where the blood sugar is very low or get complications from hyperglycemia where the blood sugar is very high for long periods of time. And of course, we a lot of us know a lot about this. Why? Because we all know somebody who is a diabetic and the kind of problems they usually have. So the, 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 the whole uh, operative procedure is not really about the, the taking out an organ, which of course happens for many reasons but replacing these important islets because they save you from being diabetic if you were to have your pancreas taken out. Well, the main reason for uh, considering TPIT is chronic pancreatitis, which means uh, pancreatitis has been happening for more than three months. Now, when the, the pancreas is actually inflamed, i.e. the uh, inflammatory component, which is in the pancreatitis, um, it causes a lot of pain. And the reason for this is that the pancreas normally produces uh, pancreatic enzymes that actually, when they occur in the wrong situation, they digest the pancreas itself. And that's, the, that's what generates the pain. Now, that pain is so severe that most people end up on narcotics. and. Uh, while that's okay to have in short intervals, say after an operation, when you have them chronically, not only uh, do you get labeled uh, as being a, a pain medication seeker, but also you have complications of nar narcotics themselves. But most people on a chronic basis cannot survive without getting rid of the cause of the pain, which is total pancreatectomy. And of course, the AIT part is to stop you from becoming diabetic by giving you your eyelids back. Well, the long-term outcome and the reason for this surgery in the first place is the chronic pain. So what we tell people is after the first year <clears throat> from the transplant, 
you should be able to, you should have weaned off the pain medication. So you should be living a normal life, which of course means going back to work and all those normal things that we do. There's one important thing though that most people talk about and because it comes up. And that is, what is the chance of being a diabetic after uh, TPIAT? And what we tell people is that it depends on how, how damaged your pancreas was at the time it came out. Obviously, if you were having chronic pancreatitis for 20 years versus say one or two years, there's more chance that more of those uh, islets will have been destroyed in the, uh, in the chronic inflammatory process over that time. So that will determine once the panc that will be determined once the once the uh, pancreas comes out, but it may be that for uh, one person only gets half or a third of normal um, number of islets as opposed to getting a normal number of islets, and therefore those people will be at risk for developing diabetes or needing some insulin, I should say, because you're not truly diabetic because you do have islets to start with. For most people, uh, you should consider it once there's a diagnosis of chronic pancreatitis, so which means that you've had many months of pain. Now, having said that, there are underlying uh, there are underlying problems to chronic pancreatitis, such as uh, an anatomical problem or the pancreas. Say, for instance, the gall gallstones can give you pancreatitis. Well, of course, the first thing would be to have the gallstones removed. So you need to be fully evaluated to know that we are in a situation where you have chronic pancreatitis and there's no other option. Having said that, most people wait too long or that it, it, by the time they get to their procedure, they've had many years, first of all, of pain, secondly, of uh, narcotics and narcotic use, and of course, debility, which means loss of, uh, loss of livelihood and so forth. So what we always say is that consider it early be evaluated and so therefore you're prepared. And not to say that you would of course need the procedure as soon as possible, but once it's clear that you are in a chronic situation, there are no other options, that's when, it, that's when the uh, surgery will be necessary. There are several centers for TPIIT around the country, but there are not a lot of centers, so you have you are limited in terms of where you want to go, and of course it's important to go somewhere where there's comprehensive care. So in that regard, if you look at um, uh, the Georgetown unit, we have a much wider uh, uh, surgical um, expertise than most places. Why? Because we do all rare and uh, complicated transplants here, which are done in very few places around the country. So it's not so much about being able to do a total pancreatectomy. Many places can do that. It is about uh, being able to handle the most difficult situations. And it's not clear who will be difficult and who won't. Thirdly, it's also important to have an excellent lab. And we have one of the very few dedicated labs that actually uh, harvests islets from pancreatic not only from, for this procedure, but for other procedures as well. So that expertise, I think, is vitally important to get as many islets as possible for, for the, um, to put back in the liver. And to, of course, therefore, reduces the chance of diabetes. Uh, in general, at MedStar, you know, we have a wide uh, you know, uh, or comprehensive follow-up because we have not only a surgical team, but also a medical team, nutritionists, and so forth. And we uh, ourselves will follow up our patients in the long term, which I think is most important, especially in the first year after this kind of surgery where most people have issues. So when you put all that together, I would suggest that, of course, at MedStar or MGTI, our transplant institute, we really can provide the best care that practically anybody can in the country. Mm -hmm.